Well, looks like we're gonna do part two cooking. What I was gonna say is that the chicken is hot as a dickens. But because I accidentally hit the side of my phone and it cut the video off, we're gonna have to do it another way. So what we're gonna do is put the chicken in the freezer. It's gonna cool it off real fast. One will hold. So now it's in the freezer. We're gonna get to some other things. All right. Bringing my old cutting board back out. Right there. Got my knife back. Now let's go get these pans. Why are things never where they're supposed to be? Let me pause you real fast and go ask my wife where she put my pot. <laughs> Alright, we're back. Since uh, I had to go look for the pot and everything and I found it, um, if it was a snake, it had bit me. It was in the uh, it was in the sink, not washed. So I went ahead and washed it up. My wife actually washed it up for me. I dried it off and uh, rinsed it off. She's a lovely, lovely lady. She does not want to be in this. But since uh, we already had to pause, I went ahead and prepped a few things. I went ahead and got the potatoes and they're in the sink. I went and got an onion for the potatoes. And this garlic here I found while I was, uh, I was getting the potatoes and I didn't have any mixed garlic in the uh, fridge for the for the dumplings and I like my garlic in my dumplings and that was something I was just going to leave out it doesn't have to have garlic but I like garlic and everything so I'm going to take these three garlic cloves I'm going to peel that outside to them it's easier to peel if you just go ahead and smash it. I don't know why I didn't just smash that first one. I thought it'd be easier. But it wasn't. But you can go ahead and get them peeled off that outside edge. Take the excess. Throw it in the garbage. And you can smash them up really, really good. That's the reason why I said I don't know why. Just go ahead and smash them. Then when you cut it up real fine, try not to cut your freaking fingers like I am. It'll already be minced for the most part. Then it can go into the broth. I like garlic a lot. If I could, I'd put three things in everything. And that'd be Italian seasoning, garlic, and some type of Cajun spice. I'd put that stuff in everything. I would not care at all. This onion is not as difficult to peel as that last one, thank God. I like to put onion in everything too. Butter, onion, garlic, you know. These are my core things. Pull that off. And then just cut it down the middle. Keep the root on so we're not crying like uh, Tina's little uh, baby. Because Tina just pulled out the micro tech and wanted to whoop us up. And throw it in the water for the potatoes. Now the potatoes, they're 
certain ways that I will not leave these on. And if I find them right now, I'll show you. But the potatoes, I leave the skins on because that's where all the nutrients is at. The nutrients is in the skins. So I'll quarter them up like that. Look for black spots. Those black spots are, you know, bruises and whatnot. And I don't want that in my potatoes because it just grosses me out. So cut these up. Go ahead and splash them in the water. Go ahead and mop that up. Put it on in between high and medium. If you have like an electric stove, it'd be kind of like a, a six and a half or a seven for the heat. Now you're going to be thinking, oh, my bad's cooking for a feast. Once again, I'm cooking for three mouths here. I know that two of them are pretty tiny, but I'm one big one, so I actually count as two. You don't get this beer gut and these guns for no reason. And uh, cooking for old Lee and Mama at the shop for lunch. And of course, me and Jennifer and Kara will partake as well. But uh, first time I cooked uh, chicken and dumplings for Mama was over in the Philippines, and I had to use that rice flour, and it's a little bit different from this. You really have to make things from scratch over there. One time I was making some uh, chicken and shrimp cheese tortellini, but didn't have any tortellini over there or any Alfredo sauce. So I ended up having to learn how to make Alfredo sauce and I made uh, cheese raviolis from scratch. I didn't even have a roller pin. What I used was an old glass jar from like uh, pickles or something. I can't remember what kind of jar it was, but it was kind of like a pickle jar. That was interesting. Speaking of rolling pins, I don't think that I have one in this house. We just moved here. And I don't believe that I've got a rolling pin here, so get in the comment section to say, hey, oh my bad. What's the matter with you? You're supposed to be some kind of cook. You ain't got no rolling pin. You don't even have your, your food prepped. You can't even film this thing properly. Something like that. So maybe I'll get a wild hair up my butt, my little boot. Filipino word of the day and uh, get on some things. I actually might make some progress on my channel. Speaking of my channel, I've been fluctuating between 63 and 64 subscribers since last Friday. This Friday will be two weeks that I've had a YouTube channel. I'm still at 64 and 63 since last Friday. It's almost been a week and I really haven't gained any traction or any subscribers. So if any of you guys are actually following my videos, actually supporting me, say like, um, I know Grugs is 100% behind me. That man, see there's a bruise right there. Let me get rid of that. That man has backed me since day one. I know day one was only two weeks ago, but that is freaking cool. And of course my brother from another mother, mother uh, brothers of the knives of salted red corn he's been backing me and then you got Isaac the new backwoodsman he's been backing me and uh, Timbo 437 of course he's been backing me those guys were the main court guys that and the angry dracolope that um, that uh, inspired me to start this and I appreciate them a lot. It has been a ton of fun. And regardless if I gain more subscribers or not, I'm still going to do this because it's just plain old fun. I might not do it as hardcore as I have been <laughs> the past week and a half, but I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do my daily EDC every day, no matter what. I'm going to keep plugging away at that. 
And I'm gonna try to do some cooking videos for y'all. I think that that shifted a little bit. And get some cooking videos down just so my kids and whatnot can have my recipes for when. For when they're in college or you know, may have some husbands that I really, really hate and don't want to be around because they're my baby girls and all you boys need to stay away from my girls. I own a lot of knives. I'm ex, I'm ex army. I was a gunner. Just saying. You really want to go this route? Anyways, back to the cooking. So, most people, like my mother, would only put salt in the mashed potatoes. What I do is it's already going at a pretty good rate, is I like to use olive oil or grapeseed oil. Just drizzle it on top, and that'll keep it from, separ um, uh, from, um, from the starch sticking together really, really bad and then you won't be able to mash it up and it won't cook all the way through because it's just one giant clump of like starch that just sticks together. I'm gonna put a little bit more water in this mix. Cover it up a little bit more. I'm gonna throw the lid on top. Lid's on top and it's good to go. All right, now, here comes the fun part. We're gonna come over here by the flowers real fast because Louise is about to make a mess. And I don't mean like a small mess. I mean, we're gonna make a big, big mess. But we're gonna mitigate that mess by putting down the old tin pool. Okay, let's go get us a bowl. <laughs> Y'all ever heard the term bull in a china shop? I believe they were referring to me. Anyways, what we're going to do I don't measure this out. I just do it by, by look. I'm sorry about that, so. I'll tell you about what I'm looking for. I'll say that's about two to three cups of flour right there. So we got two to three cups of flour. And then we're gonna get our handy dandy silicone spatula. And we're gonna get a measuring cup. If I can find the measuring cup. And no, we're not going to measure with the measuring cup. It's not what we do here at my bed. What we're going to do is dip some of this juice out of the broth, put it into the flour. We're gonna mix it up. We won't make a dough out of this. All right, still all floury. Let's put some more in. Yeah, I'm gonna be messy. My wife's gonna be pissed. She just gave me the shirt. That's making pretty good dough. Might need a little bit more juice. Not much more. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, I think I got enough. It's doing just fine. Especially when y'all see what I gotta do with it. All right, now I'm gonna roll 
some flour out right here. Now I'm going to go find me a tough cup. A glass, if you will. And this glass right here. If you ain't got a rolling pin, we can all go patriotic. Because this is America. Oh, I ain't got no stick to it. That'll be alright. So, we got that ready. We're going to go ahead and fire this thing back up. Because we need this thing up to a pretty darn good boil before we put these in. Because if this thing, this juice is not boiling really, really good before you put your dumplings in, the dumplings will disintegrate in the water. You want them to go hard. And to get them hard, they're going to be soft like dumplings, but they're going to be sticking together. You have to have it in a royal room bowl. And if you touch a dumpling to another dumpling, when you're dropping it in, the dumplings will stick together. And you want to have that slimy separation. I know it sounds a little gross, but it's pretty good. All right. Let's get ye o. With a spoon now. Get us a big old glob of this dough. Pop it down right there. I think we can handle a little bit more. Alright. Now what we're going to do is stick all these little bit bits to it. Because it will go. Let me get you better centered. I'm going to flip it up and side down. On this. So it gets good and floury. We're going to take our glass slash rolling pin and we're going to roll it out. Roll it out as thin as you want it. I like it about an eighth of an inch thick or so. Something like that. So pretty thin for a dumping because it's going to expand when it hits that over there. Now I'm gonna do another little trick ski. It's already starting to boil up a little bit, but I want it to really, really boil. So by the time I get this cut, it'll be ready to go. So I'll take my butter knife and lightly cut the dumplings up. You don't need huge dumplings, so a dumpling like that will work. Even dumplings like this will taste good. So now I got my dumplings ready. That's a good room wall. It's quick, it's fast, it's what we wanted. So now what we're gonna do is drop ski the dumplings in. Now, you got the idea now that I'll get three of those. So this is what I actually do. I put a bunch of these in my hand, so I ain't got to do multiple back and forth. Put all that doughy goodness up in there. Where there's a bowl going. And you get them all in there, 
That can probably just stay as is. But now, I need to get her flower back. Because I just curled the crap out of that tin foil. And that's not a good thing. I'll slap a little bit more flour down. I didn't really need that much, but it'll work. We're gonna go ahead and do the rest of the batch because I believe we can do it. Get rid of this. Put the water on, let that soak in some hot water. Get this going back, flatten it out. Flatten it out. Flatten it out. Rolling pin. Trust me, I know that the time on this video, and especially it being a two part video, because I messed it up, it's going to be long. But this is not the easiest thing to make on the fly. There's a lot to this meal. going that's back to a bowl so let's go ahead and pick up some of these and throw them in the pot now that we got these going in the pot as well we're about to pull the chicken out of the freezer and I'm pretty sure that some of it is still going to be roaring hot but oh my bad it's pretty tough so it shouldn't be no problem. Let's get that back up to a really nice board. Let's even kick up the heat a little bit so we can speed this process up a hair. I'm gonna go ahead and get these in my hand so I'm ready. You also wanna keep a good stir on that because the heat's up so high, these dumplings can stick to the bottom of the pan. And we don't want that. That's a pretty decent bowl. Stick a few of these in there. Mommy, happy. Mommy, happy. Mommy, happy. Well, you know, got them all in there. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't pretty, but I got her done. Now let's get that up to a rolling bowl. Let's get this in the sink, soaking in some water. That can go to a sink. This flour can go transfer to here. And then go in there. And now my wife's really gonna kill me because I just got some of that stuff in the floor. Tina ain't gonna have a chance to get my log because my wife's gonna get there. So Tina, you're just going to have to put your micro tech up because I've been cracking jokes about you all night. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and sweep this up real fast so she doesn't murder me in my sleep. Better be. If you didn't hear her, she said, I better be sweeping this up so she doesn't murder me in my sleep. You know what they say about little four foot eight, 80 pound Filipino women? They think that they're tough. This one, this one has to put up with my dumb ass, so she is pretty tough. That semi cleaned up. That counter ain't. Trash cans right here, so this isn't too bad to clean up. 
Now all it's gotta be done is sprayed off and wiped off. She can do that later. I could. <laughs> So, the reason why I pick thighs for the most part to do these things is for one, I'm a thigh guy. I'd rather eat thighs than anything. And yes, I leave the fat and the skins in my chicken and dumplings. If that grosses you out, then that's your problem. Don't leave that stuff in there for you. So there's still some blood around these bones. So when I pop them in there, give them a stir so the noodles don't stick to the bottom pan, I'll let it go ahead and cook for a little while. And I'll cook that blood straight out of there. So that's not a big deal. But another reason why I pick uh, thighs for chicken and dumplings is you don't have to deal with bones on the inside. There's only one big bone to actually deal with. So I'm not leaving bones in the uh, dumplings for my little girls to eat and choke on. Because that wouldn't be good. And uh, thighs are dark meat. Dark meat's got more fat and more flavor than uh, wings or breasts do. It's uh, more flavorful. I enjoy it more. If you're really grossed out about this, you are not going to like my videos in a month or two. Because in a month or two, I'm probably going to have my hidden canyon back from Old Salty. And I had four big bucks, well, I had two big bucks and two six to seven points in my garden two days ago eating my maters. And that's okay. You can eat my maters because I hope you like them and I hope they fatten you up and I hope you eat my greens and I hope you eat everything but, but my watermelons because I want you big, fat, and juicy. So when I put that 44 mag in your side and explode your heart, you're going in my belly. But to get to my belly, I'm gonna have to show these people how to clean a deer. And it's gonna be gruesome. And YouTube's probably gonna hate it. But that's okay. Cause I'm not a big fan of YouTube. I'm a big fan of YouTubers and a big fan of the YouTubees that watch our videos. I just don't like your politics, you two. I just don't. Why are you trying to ban everybody for no reason? Just because you don't agree with knives. I ain't gonna get in this rant. It'd be too long. Y'all already know how I feel about that. The only thing that I miss from uh, picking a whole chicken carcass and just doing thighs is you don't get the innards from inside the chicken with the thighs. I do like the innards. I like the liver and the gizzard and everything else. be put. Right. 
in my dumplings. I do prefer that to be in my dumplings. Give that a good old stir. It's cooking up right nice and well. We'll uh, put the lid back on it. It'll be all right. Get me a paper towel. Put the wooden spoon on them and wash my hands because now we're going to mash potatoes. Stir this one more again. It's all nice and stirred. It's looking fantastic. Alright. Cut this off. Move that there. Grab this. Put it here. Let's go grab some butter. Yeah. take a couple of these pot holders and drain some of this water out of here. All right, water's drained. We'll pop this whole stick of butter in here because I Put quite a few potatoes and whatnot in there. So that whole stick of butter goes in there, let it start melting. Let's salt these lightly because we already had salt in the brine that we were boiling it in. Let's go ahead and throw some pepper in here. Good dose of pepper. Let's get the blender. Let's go ahead and take this. Shove that butter way, way down deep in there. Let it get covered by taters. Let's go ahead. Start this again. I don't want nothing sticking to the bottom. It sticks to the bottom. They get black. And then you have rent. Now, I usually use a potato masher, but I did a quick look. Didn't look very hard. Didn't see one. But if you ain't got a potato masher, the other thing you can do is get out your blender. The blender will work just as good as a potato masher, if not better. And it'll be faster. So, stick it in there and go to town. Throw some water in here. Hey Kira, what's going on? Stick a little milk in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's the juice right there. That's doing real nice. Getting all good and creamy.
and it's the juice. Pasty. So that's looking good. Yeah. That's done. Yeah. I'll give you a peep ski. Yes. Yes? You want a peep? Yes. Alright. Let me let me grab the camera and you. And then we'll take a look at the mashed potatoes, Kira. Yes. Come here, camera. Got you. Come here, Kira. Come on, baby. Oh! What do you think about them mashed potatoes? Mashed potatoes. Yeah, mashed potatoes. The only thing I didn't put in the mashed potatoes that I usually do, and, and I put a little bit more on special occasions, but I usually... Daddy made mashed potatoes. Yeah, Daddy made mashed potatoes. Daddy made mashed potatoes. But I usually put um, sour cream in there. And in special occasions like uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas or a birthday, I'll put chives and bacon. And I'll actually fry the bacon in the pan before I boil the potatoes. And I'll boil the potatoes in the bacon fat and the bacon to flavor the potatoes. So now let's take a look ski at this. <coughs> Oh man, oh man, that's the juice, son. Yeah, let me put you down real quick. Hopefully, I won't turn the camera off again because I need to stir this bad boy. Look at all that collagen. Yeah, that's mighty fine right there. I believe that it's all cooked and ready to go. So, I'm gonna set this over to the side, turn this one off. And you two, if you stayed for the whole 47, 48 minutes now of both videos. I appreciate it so much. Please like and share and subscribe to my videos. Please comment on my videos. Tell me what you'd like for me to cook some more. Would you like to see Kira? Do you want any videos of Kira doing certain things? I'll darn sure do it. Me and Kira would love to be on video. And it's my booger butt and I'm my bad. You're YouTube. Have a good one.